Bailing out sucks. Handling qualities cliff. So would I rather touch down at 150 knots and go screaming off the end or bail out? Uh, you get so low that you can't bail out, uh, but you also can't land. We're still on the same page. I don't want to bail out of your airplane. Of course not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Once reaching 10,000 feet, it's going to slow down to 90 knots. Extend uh, 10 degrees of flap using the indication on the wing. Uh, accelerate out to 100 knots, uh, looking for changes in uh, trim as we do that. So first the trim changes when the flaps go out, and then any more changes as you go fast, assuming that if a uh, flap is deforming or whatever. If the uh, lateral trim gets out to where I'm more than uh, halfway, so stick centered, stop, if I'm more than halfway to the stop, we're going to board and I'm going to come home at any point. And that's uh, with the, uh, our newly installed yaw string center. So when we talk about the risks of the program, I sort of simplified it down into three major components. The first being a major structural failure, right? So whether that's a asymmetric deployment or retraction or after the flaps are deployed, once you get to speed, the flaps fail sort of in plane. Um, that's sort of a high energy failure that would result quickly in the aircraft becoming uncontrollable was the first and, and biggest risk as I saw it. Uh, so after accelerating out to 100 knots, we're gonna decel down to a stall. Try to keep note of where is the elevator position relative to the stop. I think the biggest thing is um, we're not going to do any hand, like we're not going to need to, to hit a roll rate right now. Uh -huh. But if I'm, if I, as of the, we're slowing down, I'm running out of aileron, then once we get to 50%, same rule all day, 50% all day, we're going to come home, we're going to talk about it. Uh, bailout altitudes, so we'll use uh, 4,000, out of control below 4,000, we're going for the door, that gives me 3,000 feet. Let's make it five. So out of control below five. The second biggest risk was horizontal tail stall. So horizontal tail stall is, is really scary because it results in a, in a handling qualities cliff where you know, you're getting slower and getting slower and everything's sort of doing, uh, flying as you expect. You have pitch authority, you can lower the nose as expected, but then the whole stab lets go as one and the airplane pitch bunts over the top and typically you end up in, in the cases I've seen, uh, inverted uh, and in an in a, a inverted spin. An inverted spin uh, is not a big deal, assuming you're high enough. Uh, of course, that's assuming that the airplane can, is structurally set up for it. You know, if the, if the engine falls off, if the seat belts fail, if uh, you know a bunch of debris floating around the cockpit, that can be really dangerous. Or if the airplane is incapable of recovering from an inverted spin. Uh, it seems likely that the Lance Air would recover from an inverted spin, but it's not something that people typically do. So there's a lot of risk there. Bailout criteria, if I can't, So we assume touchdown is at what? A fast touchdown would be maybe 100 knots. So if I can't control the airplane at 100 knots, so if the flaps bend or break or something, and I can't get comfortable controlling the airplane with like a 2G turn at 100 knots, then we're gonna go for the door. If I get within, um, if I have to have the control within 10% of the stop, I'm gonna go for the door at 100 knots, within 10%. Do you think that's fair? I don't mean to be directive here. I'm just trying to have a conversation before yes, we take yes. off. Yes, I'm trying to think about it. It seems fair. 10% of stop, 2G turn at 100 knots. Uh, and the bailout procedure is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna find a area that's abandoned, but as close to the airport as I can on the north side. I'm gonna do my best to tell you where I am and then I'm yeah. gonna go for the door. Uh, you're gonna use flight aware to know where I am. Hopefully I can see you. Tried it yet, so we'll see. And then I'm gonna have the cell phone, so that'll be the final way that we can rendezvous yeah. if I'm on foot. The third risk factor is what I would call uh, inadequate but still symmetric handling quality problems. Most of that being in the pitch axis. So obviously as you're going slower and slower and slower, you may not uh, result in a handling qualities cliff, but you may end up in a situation where the airplane is sort of uh, become degraded in terms of handling qualities to such a point that it's really not safe to land, but you're not thinking about it uh, uh, properly. So uh, I worked on a program once where I was flying an airplane, I was dive testing an airplane, and the ailerons became jammed during the dive test. I was up at uh, seven or 8,000 feet because I was dive testing the airplane, and at seven or 8,000 feet, uh, it, it was, uh, it handled well enough. So I proceeded back to the airport uh, with the control jam, uh, fighting it, uh, as I flew back. The problem was that once I descended down to pattern elevation, the turbulence was such that the, the amount of limited 
lateral control that I had because of the jam was now suddenly a really big issue. At seven or 8,000 feet, I wasn't getting bopped around, so I didn't have to use the ailerons very much, so it didn't take as much aileron control to be safe. Once I descended down below bailout altitude, down to the uh, traffic pattern where things are a lot busier and it's a lot harder to sort of uh, back yourself up, the airplane's getting knocked around. I'm thinking, man, I, I should have thought about this more, or I wonder if uh, if I would have progressed towards a landing if I if I had been able to predict this. The, the scary idea being that uh, you get so low that you can't bail out, uh, but you also can't land. So in the case of this, it could be that the uh, uh, that while yes, you can control the airplane uh, statically, you know, you, you can take the airplane to a predicted stall speed and then to a predicted landing speed. You may not have enough, uh, just like we talked about, roll control to deal with the turbulence in the uh, in the area, or there's something going on with uh, the D a Dutch roll mode that's driven by tail blinking, uh, where the airplane is is slowly becoming uncontrollable, but you're having trouble perceive it, or really the most likely scenario, which is where the control forces have reversed. You know, you're you're well past the stick free uh, neutral point and into the stick fixed neutral point or maybe past the stick fixed neutral point and the workload has gotten up very high again where it's it's uh, not an issue with the, uh, the the low demands of high altitude flight but once you get down and you're you know trying to get to the runway and you're trying to maneuver around traffic etc it becomes really dangerous <clears throat> so I'm gonna say that again out of control below 5,000 feet I'm going for the door if I'm within 10% of a, of a control stop Is, does that include the pitch axis? At a 2G, in a 2G turn at 100 knots, I'm going for the door. Does that include the pitch axis? I think so. 2G turn at 100 knots. So what I'm concerned about is like, if, if you only have, if you can only put enough CL on the wing to get to 100 knots, but I can't turn, mm. that doesn't work, right? So maybe 2G is too much, but I need to be able to maneuver at some, and I'm not going to approach the airport at 100 knots, right? You're going to approach it at 120 or something. Right. You know, normal approach is 110. Right. So approach the airport at say 120, and then you need to be able to decel and have control. You can land at 120. Land at 120. Okay. So what do you want? 2G at 120? 1.5G at 120? Bailing out sucks. I, I know. I'm, I'm trying to get it simple here. Yeah. So 2G at 100. It's, it's definitely better, but the question is, is it better than bailing out? So would I rather touch down at 150 knots and go screaming off the end uh, than, or bail out? So I think it's probably Obviously one... saving the plane at running at 150, it, it, that can be um, So let's say 150 at 1.5. And you know, assuming that we have radio comms, and everything, we're, this isn't going to happen fast. We would have time to talk about it. But I just want to make sure that we've thought about what are the scenarios that are going to add up to uh, going for the door. Besides just you know, a dynamic, we're out of control. It's an inverted spin. I can't get out of it. You know, or I can't get the thing to stop spinning. And therefore, I'm going to bail out. We're so we're on the same page. I don't want to bail out of your airplane. Of course not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I also don't want to. I don't want to have an argument about uh, whether or not it's worth to try to uh, attempt a approach right. any more than we have to. Uh, okay. So, are there any other uh, emergency procedure stuff? That, so, there's flaps up. Is there a circuit breaker for the flaps? Yes. 